Welcome back. And big news this week, we hit 500 deposits. So that's exciting, but uh, we've still got lots of work to do. So here we are on the mill. And this is the um, plug for the uh, braces for the nose gear. And just running the swarf cuts here to finish off. And actually spent quite a lot of time uh, yesterday um, fixing the coupling that we have on the mill to um, remove the slop that we had in the Z drive. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes out next time we uh, run the mill. And here are those uh, floor brace plugs that the guys have been working on. So they're actually all waxed up now, uh, getting ready to have the uh, rubber profile put on there before we can pull the molds from those. And here's the plug for the glare shield braces. And because of the slop we had in the Z drive that was had been getting progressively worse, this thing needed quite a bit of handwork. Um, and similarly, actually, with this one, the, the one that just we were looking at before for the... Uh, nose gear door so hopefully that'll be a thing of the past and uh, the guys will have less work to do on on finishing these plugs once they come off the machine so back onto the roof mold here we are um, setting up to create the transitions between the door inserts and the actual mold itself so we're just putting a board there that we can uh, lay up against and you see there's one on the other side and that's just kind of uh, temporarily glued, uh, glued into place so it won't move while the layup's being done. And you'll see that a little bit further along here. And next up on the mill, we have the plug for the nose compartment door. And so on this one, I tried to make it so the end mill didn't lift off the, the work as many times and have to come back down. So that way uh, we didn't have the same problem with uh, so many different variations in the Z positioning, which uh, was the problem on those last couple. Um, and actually worked out quite a lot better. So here it is running um, a swarf cut along where the transitions are between the end of the part and the actual start of the flanges. So the the idea is here to try and get this part, you know, super accurate. So when we actually trim it off, we trim off right to the edge of the flange line and the door will fit uh, perfectly in the opening that we have with just a slight reveal around the edge. Maybe I think I've got it set for two or three millimeters. And by reducing it to that amount, we end up uh, having, you know, less turbulence around those uh, intersections around the edges of where the door is. So it's pretty important to try and uh, get this as accurate as possible. Back on the roof mold and Mark was busy putting the silicon rubber profile in place for the vacuum bag channel. And the idea is here to make the channels from the roof mold meet up with the channel from the door insert. So that's what you can see he's done there and he's just holding that while the glue dries. And likewise on those floor um, brace plugs, uh, Devin and Zach were busy putting their silicon rubber profile on those. And a little bit uh, tricky because of the way that was flanged up. And here's the roof one again, and this is with the black um, top coat um, put into place there or painted in place. So there's stepping through just, it's kind of like we're just creating a mold here, but just creating an extension to the existing one that will actually live on the, uh, live on the door insert and come off when, when we release the door insert, that's how it will come off. So obviously one on either side. So starting out with a black and then there'll be some uh, layers of carbon fiber put on there that you'll see in a little bit. If you recall last week, the guys had finished laying up the mold for the glare shield. And so here it is, uh, Jeff and uh, Mark laying up the part itself. So this is pretty simple. It's non-structural. So it's just a couple of layers of carbon fiber in there and not even necessary to vacuum bag it in this case, we, even though we've set up the mold to handle that in the future. And here's the nose compartment door plug and the guys are sanding on that and uh, didn't need as much finishing work as what the other ones did so that was good and back on the roof mold for the last time here so here's the carbon fiber laid into place for those transitions and nothing really that complicated there it's just as i said creating a transition and there's the other side there so those are done and so we still got a little bit more prep work to do on that mold before we can lay up the roof and then you can see with the board removed 
um, there's the rubber profile in there that makes the two channels uh, made up. So just a bit of cleanup work on that. And uh, then we'll be cutting the core for the roof there and uh, prepping the inside uh, with a white top coat and then laying that up hopefully by the end of next week. And here's the glare shield part uh, finished after the layer, so you can get a better look at how that came out. And that uh, will be released uh, on Monday, see how that turns out. We'll be able to trim it off and, and put it into place uh, and see how it fits there inside the fuselage, which will be exciting. So things are really starting to come together with that. On the CAD side of things, I've been working on uh, getting the door frame um, ready for milling. So here I've added a bunch of flanges and just cleaning things up and figuring out, you know, how it's all going to be milled. So still got a little bit more work to do on that because this is all going to be sort of done in one part and we're trying to keep it simple where we can. Meanwhile, Mark's been busy finishing off um, specifying all the separate parts that make up the belt drive system so we can start uh, putting those together and uh, getting the custom pieces milled. And he's also been uh, working on the finishing off a couple of changes to the engine mount to simplify that. And you can see this is pretty much what the final um, thing's going to look like. And you see there I have the air, uh, air conditioning compressor in place there just for location thing. So we made sure there's no sort of... Um, collisions with the engine mount and that one there is the, where the alternator lives and we've got the various different engine mounts in place here that's one of them there and then one at the back so we have four different mounts there moving over to the engine now we have mark doing uh, fabrication for us and we have kyle doing machining for us and just to clear up things we have three different marks working for us one is in our shop and the other one is doing our fea and structural analysis and the last one that i'm referring to now is doing the fabrication for us so so uh, Mark was waiting on Kyle to finish off this um, metal plate that you kind of see in the middle of the picture there. And it's an adapter between the turbo and the actual engine itself. And there's an oil return line that's embedded into that. And so Kyle had fabricated that for us uh, just this week and finished it off. So now Mark um, has the turbo in place exactly where it needs to live. And so he's going to be working on uh, plumbing up the Y pipe for that. And from the Y pipe, he'll also be plumbing in the wastegate, which will route back through to the exhaust on the other side of the turbo. And later on, he'll be working on plumbing up um, the intercooler and just the regular air intake, which I think initially will probably just have um, just a standard filter on there, at least while we're just uh, running it on the test stand. So there's a bunch of things uh, that Mark's going to be working on, and I'll be sort of working in conjunction with him, but you'll see... Uh, a lot more news coming on the engine over the coming weeks as we're going to, you know, really sort of fast track it now and, and get it um, up on the stand. The engine mount will be being constructed over the next few weeks as well now that Mark's, uh, the other Mark has finished the uh, design on that. So that's our update for the engine uh, for this go around. And lastly, I wanted to remind uh, anybody who's going to Oshkosh um, to make sure they don't miss uh, my little talk that I'll be doing there on Wednesday morning at 8.30 in the uh, Airplane Workshop building. And thanks to everybody uh, who commented on the last uh, video that said they're going to be coming along. It looks like we're going to get a pretty good crowd in there. Hopefully uh, we get a bunch of people that haven't heard about Raptor yet. Last year it was fun to meet with everybody, but this year it's actually going to be even better because there's a lot more to talk about given that we're building the Raptor as opposed to last year we were just talking about uh, getting organized to start. Anyway, I'm looking forward to that, and uh, that's our update for this week. Thanks for watching.